Hello everyone, let's uh, revisit the linear optimization problem where we had the PAR uh, ink company that was making golf bags with the uh, four step process that had <coughs> um, a cut and die, sewing, finishing, and inspecting where you had different uh, amounts of hours that were available to do each of these steps and then different amounts of time whether you were making a standard bag or a deluxe bag. <coughs> Let's suppose now we have a slightly more complicated profit uh, profit uh, function, uh, possibly nonlinear. So we might have exponents which are not uh, just one. <coughs> um, if you go to page 450 in the textbook um, in chapter 10, they look into... Uh, basically uh, a demand versus uh, price kind of scenario and a lot of times when you have demand and price and some stuff from economics then you'll have uh, more complicated formulas um, so you know if, if you were <coughs> just sitting there based on having way too many orders uh, and you're just trying to get the most out of what you have because you know you're basically limited based on machine time a linear optimization problem might be ideal, but if you have something more complicated, like you you have machine time, but you also have different kinds of demands interacting with the prices, then you might have something more complicated. So, um, <coughs> basically everything is the same, but we're going to change this formula here. So let's suppo suppose the total profit is instead given by uh, 80 times S minus one fifteenth times s squared so that means to the second power plus one fifty times d minus one fifty squared then uh Let's see how this changes what we do in Excel. So let's come back to the uh, sheet we had last time. Um, so uh, again, notice we looked at each of our constraints and put those up top. Cut and die, sew, finish, inspect. The coefficients on the constraints and the hours available. <coughs> and then last time we optimized with a different profit formula. So this time, let's take that profit formula and alter it. So now it's not just 10 times the standard plus 9 times the deluxe. We have uh, the new profit, 80 times the standard number squared plus or minus 1 15th times, oh, sorry, the first one is just 80 times S. We don't square it until the next one, so let's go up here and make sure that's not squared. And then this should be A13. I clicked the wrong cell. Again, this is the standard. And now we want to square it. And then we've got, so basically I'm just looking at this formula and typing it in, replacing S with the bags produced cell uh, B10 and D with the deluxe produced cell C10. Uh, so then we've got plus 150 times the demand cell uh, minus one-fifth times demand squared. Ah, not D. Again, the cell D squared. So hit enter, and we get this, this profit. But perhaps we're not subjecting ourselves to the correct constraints. So let's see if we can use the Excel solver to modify this so that we get the correct relationship. So again, we want to come to solver and we want to set the objective as the profit by changing the variables here. And we do have the same set of constraints. So just to remind you how to do that in case you've forgotten, um, let's just reset everything. 
because we just did it. So set objective, we want to maximize the profit. So select max and then changing variable cells, the bags produced for standard and deluxe. And then we want to add constraints. We want each of the hours used to be less than or equal to the constraints on our hours for the problem. Add these up, add, so I have to do it again. So then are equal to the constraint, and then we just hit OK. And then notice down here, it was solving with the wrong method. We can't use simplex linear problem when we actually have a nonlinear problem. So we have to use this GRG nonlinear. So this is one that uh, is going to work in these nonlinear scenarios. And then we click Solve. And again, we can keep the solver solution um, and add a variety of reports. Normally, answer is the one I like to add. Um, and then click OK. So we got the second answer report now for the nonlinear problem. Um, and notice what has gone on here. So in sheet one, hmm. Let me make sure I entered this formula incorrectly. 80 times B10 minus 1 15th times B10 squared. Mm -hmm. It's 1 50 times the deluxe minus 1 5th times the deluxe squared. Let's uh, set these bags produced back down to 1 just to see if we get something that makes sense. Maybe we started off with something too high. Um, and then let's look at the profit. 80 times. The ton, yeah. Just checking my numbers. Okay, good. Everything still looks correct. From last time. I have all my constraints. Yeah, so. Maybe we had the hours too high and everything kind of crazy. So let's try one more time on the solver. Um, we want to maximize the profit by changing the B10 and C10 subject. Oh, somehow these constraints are listed twice. Let's change. Okay. Delete. Delete. Let's do it again. Um, so we want to add constraints. We want the hours used, which is the sum product of these, to be less than the hours available. Okay, so click OK. Everything looks OK. GRG nonlinear, good. Solve. And keep solver solution. Let's add this answer sheet again, see what happens. So we're just getting a number that's much too big. Okay, so I found our problem. Perhaps you noticed it yourself, but in this total profit, I kept running the solver and I was like, okay, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? I keep getting numbers that are just crazy big. Um, there was an extra carrot right here. So that was causing all my issues. So you really have to pay attention to syntax. So if I take that out and then hit enter, I get a much more reasonable number. So um, let's again just start over. Let's say this is one. This is one. Okay, so we have some small number. Uh, then click solver. We want to do this. And then put everything the same way we had it before. But um, we want to maximize the profit. We want the bags produced to be the changing cells. We want these four sum products to be less than or equal to hours available. We want GRG nonlinear. Um, variables not negative, sure. Click solve, answer report, okay, and we get much more reasonable values. Um, again, let's format these cells. I just, uh, let's see, it looks like just way too many decimal places to me. Um, so, number. Decimal places too. Okay. So let's do that for all these also. Uh, 
number. We don't want the decimal place to be two. Okay. All right, so notice we get the bags produced and we've got our profit maximized at $49,920.55 and all of our hours uh, are smaller than the hours available. So uh, that's all we had to do was change the uh, profit formula and make sure you don't mess up on the syntax in there because it will really give you a headache trying to find it. So uh, double check the first time. Um, so that should help you out for the nonlinear optimization problem on the uh, quiz. And uh, I will wish you good luck.